Um, welcome everyone. My name is Kathy and I will moderate this session. It's customizing you portal. Before we begin, just a few housekeeping details. Um, the session is being recorded. You'll receive an email announcement once the recordings are available. If you have questions or comments throughout the session, feel free to drop them in the chat. We're going to save answering the questions till the end of the session. Um, at that time, you can unmute yourself if you want to talk directly to Chris. The presenter for the session is Chris Beach. Chris Beach is a software developer at Unicon Inc. Chris is currently involved in the support and development. Whoops, my screen just disappeared. Sorry, support and development of open source software, including the Open Aquella, UPortal, and Fiasin. Chris sits on the Open Aquella Advisory Board, Open Aquella Security Group, and is a UPortal committer. Um, go ahead and take it away, Chris. All right, thank you, Kathy. Uh, so I appreciate the introduction. Uh, so there's a headshot for you all. We're going to start, uh, let me actually back up here one. Um, the intended audience uh, is, is both experienced uPortal adopters that have already customized their uPortal instance as well as those that are just starting out on the journey. Um, the the, the flow is going to be more geared towards the folks that are just starting out or interested in uPortal. And then what I'd like to do is um, just kind of put some folks on the spot that if they would like to talk a little, think about your experiences customizing uPortal, right? If, as you have gone through that, um, that road and, you know, some of the lessons learned and whatnot, and if you could, if you could pull out a few um, things that you would want to impart to other people, um, we should have a, a few minutes at the end to be able to share those thoughts. Okay, so this is customizing new portal, but uh, more of an introduction. So with that, you're starting your journey now with you portal. You've, do, you've figured out that you have a strategic need to channel the pertinent data to the right person at the appropriate time. And you've also realized that uPortal can be this effective solution to solve your portal and dashboard strategic needs. And now it's time to make it your own. It's an exciting time and we get to learn a lot. And how on earth do you do that, right? That's what we're here to talk about today. We're going to talk a little bit about the uPortal start architecture. We're going to talk about some design practices with back-end customization. We're going to talk about um, front-end customization and how you might go about that. Uh, we're going to keep both of those somewhat high level. We're not going to try to jump into a lot of nitty-gritty code uh, because we're trying to get this overall idea of, well, how, how do I go about making uPortal my own? Um, there's lots of excellent documentation out there on you know, how to build out uh, front-end skins and um, and how to implement paths and whatnot, but we want to focus on the overall idea. We'll talk about some consideration, which considerations, which as I was preparing for this, uh, you know, I gathered, um, and then we're going to go into that that veteran community input, if you will. What are your lessons learned? If you were to give some considerations to folks uh, that are starting out on the journey, what would you say? Um, if you could in the chat, just in terms of, um, so we can gauge interest in the uPortal community going forward, if about this kind of presentation at Open Imperial, please note um, what group you're with, what university, and where you are with your portal. Um, and like I said, this is not meant to be a deep technical discussion, but more of a conceptual overview. So let's look at the architecture of uPortal start. This is similar to how uPortal existed uh, before uPortal 5, uh, but it has, a, um, it has a, a fundamental shift in how you customize uPortal. So uPortal Start is really a, a Gradle-based system that is, a, is a, just a series of command line interface tools to make your life easier with uPortal. Um, you still have the uPortal core code that handles all of the auditing and permissioning, um, you know, authentication and those kind of things. And then you have a variety of portlets you can choose from. And then, of course, you can customize portlets and uh, create your own. And then you have a variety now of web components uh, that can serve similar purposes to the portlets. 
when you talk about how easy it is to configure uPortal start, uh, essentially, if you know where to look, it's pretty easy. If you go into the portlet definitions, uh, you can go ahead into one of these XML files, modify it, run your data import, and you're up and running with a new portlet. In terms of how the uPortal start build system, you know, what, if it, what is one of its benefits is when you want to change a specific portlet or let's say something um, was changed in uPortal core, you don't have to upgrade everything in a monolithic um, uh, you know, or comprehensive manner. You can go ahead and just bump one version. And of course, sometimes maybe uPortal core and a portlet needs to be updated due to a dependency um, between the two, but Generally speaking, you can go ahead and think of it as just, you know, you can go ahead and, and rev the weather portlet if you want to customize it, making it your own, um, and, but you don't have to touch everything else, right? And so this gives you a more consistent way to uh, run your portal and less risk um, that, you know, you know what you're changing instead of having to pull in a bunch of other changes. So let's now talk a little bit about how you would go about customizing your backend, right? This is like deep integration stuff um, and you know, uPortal core may not be, uh, you might not know have everything you need in uPortal core right now. You need to add a new integration or add some new functionality. So your wheelhouse, it's helpful if you know Spring and Java. It works on Hibernate. Uh, it's search is, is starting to trend towards Lucene. And then we have Gradle as our build system. When you look at customizing the Java logic, right, there's two basic patterns that are recommended to use, the decorator pattern and the strategy pattern. And we'll talk about those in a minute. These patterns are then applied via Spring, right? And so that can cause some, some complexity, but it also provides some flexibility. So the decorator pattern, um, also known as the wrapper pattern, it gives you the ability to add more functionality to an object while the other functionality is still able to uh, be executed. Uh, it allows the original logic, the folks that created it, um, you know, several years ago to still run without having to change that logic and you're just adding something else on top of it. Um, an example of this is like a servlet request filter where you just want to add maybe some um, some performance logging onto a certain request and you can go ahead and do that with the decorator pattern. For the strategy pattern, it's, uh, it's a little different mindset there. It allows you to encapsulate more than one implementation, um, thereby allowing different logic for a common framework. Uh, so you can set up your, your scaffolding, if you will, and then if there's some logic that needs to be run differently based on your, your authentication integration or even just what, um, uh, what adopter you know you are maybe there's some differences there as well um, you can go ahead and um, and separate out that logic so you don't have to make changes to the core platform in order to inject um, you know some very specific strategic logic um, into the code one of the benefits of this is it allows for future um, and I'm putting in parentheses unknown implementations right because we don't know everything that uPortal is going to be used for in the next 10 years. But we do know that, you know, at a certain point, you're going to want to do something with, say, your LDAP keys that are coming in. So we're going to pull that out into a, uh, into a if through the strategy pattern. So when you get your LDAP key, uh, the, the logic allows you to do something with that. And then there's some default strategies, some strategies that have been built out, but you, you can go ahead and create more strategies um, as time progresses and new integrations come up. And when you want to apply it to uPortal, there's some things to look at. Uh, now these patterns are used heavily in uPortal. So once you wrap your head around those two patterns and, uh, and how uPortal uses them, you can start to uh, flesh out some of the complexity that you might see first looking at uPortal. Um, I know that when I started with uPortal, that was one of the things that was that was a slower adoption rate to me is because I did not understand these two patterns um, and how they were being used. Uh, you want to seriously consider uh, when you, 
When you identify a need in uPortal Core for new decorator or strategy patterns to be implemented, consider contributing them back to uPortal Core. Uh, there's pros and cons to this approach, but since we are an open source community, uh, the, the pros of community collaboration and other people knowing what strategies are out there, so they're less likely to break them based on needing to change that strategy, um, will occur. And it will also make it easier for you to upgrade uh, because your strategies are known um, and, and possibly tested by other users, and then it's not so much customized logic. And we'll talk about that in the considerations a little bit more. Uh, so feel free to, con you know, to extend existing functionality by creating new instances of the pattern or creating decorators or new strategies for patterns that have already been implemented, right? So you should feel free to, I mean, the, the point of these patterns is, is extensibility and being able to um, modify the uPortal code, make it configurable and customizable while all working from the same code base. And then when you're looking at how do I, you know, as the point of the slide says, how do I actually apply it to my instance? Um, if you choose to put your changes into uPortal Core, that should be built through the community processes. And then you pull that down through the uPortal start properties and just rev that version. So your, um, so the new logic and pattern hooks are there. And then you can go ahead and add the small bit of logic configuration and whatnot that you needed into your uPortal start repo. The goal here is that you never, like as, a, as a, an adopter running this in production, you should never locally build uPortal core anymore. It should all be through uPortal start. Right. And so why all of this complexity, right? We talked a little bit about it. It allows us to keep the uPortal core and the uPortal portlets more common, right? So anyone can go ahead and pick up a portlet and then, um, and then drop it into their instance and be able to use it much like I've used mine and we just expose configuration points so I can go ahead and modify that. Uh, you see this kind of when you're starting out, um, Fiosyn is an interesting um, uh, situation there, right? It's a useful piece of software and, and uh, it's not knocking University of Edinburgh at all. It makes sense why it happened, uh, but it was a lot of uni uh, specific things to the University of Edinburgh. So when State Center ha um, wanted to adopt it, they had to kind of pull that out, which ended uh, up making kind of a fork or, you know, the, the code bases diverged and now there's efforts to bring that back in. And we want to make sure that that doesn't happen with uPortal, right? Uh, uPortal 4, 4, you know, you could, you had a tendency to do that because you would change uPortal core. And now when you wanted to update, you had to, you know, do the mergers and stuff. And, it, and you know, it took someone with a lot of experience to be able to untangle that mess. So we want to keep them common as, you know, uh, and, you know, available to the community without specific logic for our instance as possible. And this really leads to lower risk and cost during your upgrades, right? So there was a discussion earlier in Open Aperio this week about, you know, being able to rev your, your, um, your technology and you know, can you do it only once a year? Can you do it once a month? Uh, one person said that they can go ahead and do it every week, right? And so you do that because you have, you know the changes that are coming through and you're able to appropriately handle those. And of course you have to have your university admin support on that. Uh, your community will then be able to support your changes, especially you know, if, they, if they're uh, general enough for someone else to use them but specific enough for you to find value at, then the community will help support your changes, but you will be able to have the, your configuration freedom. So you can run it how you want and someone else can, um, can choose a different path if need be. It also helps you easily identify what's your customizations. Your customizations are what in, are what in uh, sorry, are what is in uPortal start. You know that uPortal core is not customized. Hopefully that gave you an idea of where to go, where to start when you're looking at the back end and you're saying, well, I need this integration. Well, how do I start? Well, go look and see if there's already a pattern established for that functionality. And if not, consider making uh, before you try to do things kind of outside of that recommendation. Now let's talk a little bit about the front end and how you can go ahead and, and customize it. 
at the at the very um, uh, kind of basic level, right? Uh, you want to go ahead and be able to brand or reskin your U Portal instance, um, and you can do so. There is a a Gradle task in U Portal Start again. Um, Know, nodding to that U Portal Start is just a bunch of tooling uh, to make working with U Portal easier and more efficient. It's called Skin Generate, and you can go ahead and create your own skin. And then once that's generated, you have a set of uh, CSS and less files that you can go ahead and um, go in, modify, and redeploy, and you're you're up and running with your own skin. And so I put a link out there once these slides are shared, and it's pretty easy to go find it as well. Just the U Portal Start homepage will tell you a little bit more detail on how to do that. And so you have levels in terms of your front end customizations. Right? And we see this with any application that allows the deep kind of customization that you portal offers. Right? You can see sites that have just rebranded, reskinned, um, but it has the same look and feel. And that's not a bad thing. It's just is what it is, right? Maybe they have a smaller development budget or they like the vanilla look and feel. Uh, you can go then deeper and with you portal it's interesting because it's all based on you know these building blocks of portlets and web components so you get to choose you know you don't have to always have an email preview portlet um, for all users right you can choose to uh, customize that and and possibly modify how that email preview portlet looks um, and without having to worry about the other portlets but you can go ahead and leverage standard portlets and web components and just leverage how they're configured and the customizations that they offer out of the box. If that's not good enough, um, then you can go ahead and customize portlets. You can either uh, rev the, the standard ports, portlets that are out there just to create more configuration. Again, that's, that's helpful to the community or you can create your own custom portlet and put pretty much whatever logic you want inside there. And that goes the same for web components, right? There's starting to be a growing ecosystem of web components that is specifically known to work well with uPortal. Um, but there is no reason why you can't take web components that are built from the Elms Learning Network uh, repositories and work to put those into uPortal, right? And that's one of the, um, the discussions that I've had this week is, you know, how can we create a, a more common unity between web components that are created. Because there's some cool things that both projects have been able to come up with. Um, why not share those, right? And leveraging web components with uPortal allows that sharing to occur. And then at the at the deeper level, right? Uh, you just, for some reason, the, the standard UX for uPortal does not work for you and you just want to interact with it through APIs and put your own dashboards um, look and feel on top of it, you're able to do that through the APIs. Okay, so you have to choose what's your what's your trade offs, right? Development availability and expertise versus the time um, and, you know, and the and the budget to be able to make those changes. So just a little bit of code here to show how simple it is to tie in a web component. Um, so this is, we're looking at the favorites carousel. This is a portlet definition file, right? So that list of XML files that we saw, this is just a, a portion of one of those. And in one of those tags, just to talk about the, you know, that defines the content of this simple content portlet, uh, you just put in some HTML essentially. And what we're doing is we're pulling in the, um, the web component technology that's used to build and drive uh, this web component, which is view in this case, we pull in the logic of the web component itself. So the content carousel, which is in the U portal web components repo. And then we just place a, a content carousel on the page. Um, if you're familiar with web components, this shouldn't look too, um, uh, too abstract or, or foreign. Um, but if you're new to web components, we have essentially created our own HTML tag. Right. There's the dash in there that shows inside of content carousel. You see that this content dash carousel. The dash says, hey, this is a web component. You know it's different than uh, another HTML tag like script or, um, or body. So it's going to do something different, but you can just go ahead and interleave that in with your HTML tags to create these, these super rich experiences. Inside of the content carousel tag, then you have the ability to pass in again configuration and and custom logic uh, to deeper uh, 
customize your implementate or your configuration of that content carousel without ever having to go ahead and rev content carousel yourself. And it was really late last night, so I meant to get a picture of the vanilla skin here, um, which I did not get to. But imagine, you know, if you've seen you portal start, it's um, it's just kind of a, a blue and gray interface. The admin icons are, they're not bad, but they're not that slick modern feel necessarily, um, but they're not necessarily meant to be, right? This is supposed to give you a starting point so you can go ahead and make it your own. It's not really meant for you to run just in the basic, um, uh, the basic skin all the time. So we took these screenshots from the overview presentation. So hopefully you've seen these before and you're starting to kind of get a little more familiar with them. But as we talk about how do you reskin and what levels do you go through, uh, these screenshots are portlets that have chosen various levels of rebranding and um, reimagining the user interface to make it work for their groups. Okay. And we have another set again that's, uh, you know, the, the content carousel and cards layout. Um, it's uh, a variety of things and it's pretty cool to see the differences that people came up with all still running on the same ePortal core logic. So some final considerations, right? As you are looking to start on your journey of customizing ePortal, uh, ePortal is a mature product. Okay, so if you're asking, well, how do I do that? Uh, you likely don't need to reinvent the wheel. So reach out to adopters, or if you're working with a company like Unicon, we can, we can provide that technical expertise to say, oh, it's, it's already built, and this is how you configure it. Um, and the answer might be that you need, to, you need to do some customization, and that'll be all right. Focus on configuration over core customization when possible. It makes your life easier. It reduces your dev cycles. Um, you know, all the kind of the standard answers when if you can configure something, it's better than customizing if you can. When you do create customizations, um, if you can, based on the customization, uh, consider pushing it into the ePortal core repo, become part of the development community um, and, you know, help out the communities because the community can then help out you. Uh, customize and establish patterns, right? Take a look at the decorator and the strategy pattern, internalize them. So when you're looking and working with uPortal, you're gonna be able to be familiar with what you're seeing. Uh, make web components your friends. You don't have to use web components and uPortal, but it is, um, you know, as I've been working with uPortal the last few years, I've seen them kind of come into play um, and they're, they're pretty slick and they're very useful and they're, um, they're reusable, right? So there's a lot of benefit to those. And then as kind of an over, overall um, consideration, when you're, when you're looking to start, people have been use, using uPortal for a long time. There's a bunch of folks out there and you know they're a friendly group of people. Uh, they like to talk about what their implementation is. Uh, so reach out to adopters, leverage their experience, say, hey, I'm looking to do this. Have you ever seen this before? And you should be able to find an adopter that has done something similar, if not just like you're trying to do, uh, and that you're gonna be able to lean on their lessons learned. So just a shameless plug, since Unicon's paying me to uh, come to Open Apparel and, and to give these presentations. Um, if you're interested in like deep customization of your portal, you have a migration that you need and you're, you know, reaching out to the community is not giving you the support you need. Uh, we have experts that are able to help you with that along with a bunch of other um, open source expertise uh, that we can help leverage to make your educational tech strategy a realization. So if you want to know more, uh, take a look at uPortal Starts repo uh, that has an excellent README, um, lots of documentation out there. This, uh, the backend considerations uh, or the backend customizations was uh, pulled a lot from the backend design patterns uh, written by Benito Gonzalez. He was, unfortunately, he decided to go take a trip with his wife due to their anniversary this week. Um, so that's why he was not able to be here. Um, but his blogs are quite interesting and helped explain where we're, um, where we're going with these, uh, these design patterns in the back end and why you want to use them. Uh, so take a look at that if you want further reading. Uh, for the front end design, why we want web components, why it came about, there's two um, webinars that were given um, that, that you'll hear the voice of Drew Wills um, 
and he's he's no longer with Unicon, um, but he's still, you know, if you ever have a chance to catch up with him and want to talk to you portal, the guy is, is crazy knowledgeable about the application. Um, and he, um, he in part helped with these webinars um, and was able to provide some understanding on why we want web components and what they can help us with. So at this point, um, I'll take a break from talking hopefully. And if there's any veteran adopters out there, um, what are your lessons learned as you have customized uPortal? So this, there's nothing in the chat. Um, I'm seeing a couple folks um, Jim, Julian, at least, um, if anyone's willing to just kind of talk a little bit about their, their experience, that'd be appreciated, but I know it's kind of on the spot. So no worries if, if it's a little too much off guard. I'm sorry, Chris, but, uh, what, uh, this is Jim, what, um, uh, what ex what would be useful? Um, I guess what would folks want to hear in terms of customization? Um, I guess. I mean, it's it can be a variety, right? We have a variety of users out there, and um, the. Uh, um, you know, and this will be a recording. So when you chose to go with uPortal, I know that uh, UW uh, Madison chose to kind of reimagine the front end with uPortal Home. Uh, could you talk a few minutes on why you chose to do that and go through that deeper development effort? Well, I guess maybe just to touch uh, briefly on that, because there probably are some other um, uh, questions I see coming in our chat that might be um, of value too. I think one of the benefits of um, uPortal, especially at the later versions, is that more and more um, APIs have been um, uh, put in place so that the data from the uPortal backend is available. And that has made um, do possible. Um, and you know it's not necessarily what uh, I would think a new adopter might want to tackle right out of the, out of the box, um, because you could do you know some of that um, lower level or that entry level customization to um, you know customize um, the front end or the back end to meet your needs. But if you do want to tackle something completely different, um, then uh, you're able to do that using the APIs. Um, we did at, at the UW, we did um, some user experience research um, that kind of led us to the um, card or tile um, front end design that we have in what we call uPortal Home. Um, and we were able to use the existing uh, um, app directory the layout engine, um, uh, the groups and permissions all to that from uPortal and we were able to come up with our own front end using at the time um, Angular JS. So um, I guess that's one of the main um, things that I would highlight is that you can really create innovative UIs and still use the uh, bulk of the product. Um, and I think uh, in the uh, support I community, again, they've done some really innovative stuff um, uh, as well and still can use um, the uPortal backend. Thank you, Jim. I appreciate that. A question came in on the chat from Ray Bon. Um, can you describe the upgrade process for uPortal and the portlet deployment? And Julian answered it, um, and it is you know really that simple. When you're on uPortal five and above, you just change the dependency version in the in that you store in that uPortal start properties file, um, and then you can redeploy um, based on the the changes that are coming in. Um, 
you know, you might have a couple different Gradle tasks that you need to run, but they'll all be available in uPortal Start. Um, and so it should be a fairly slick upgrade process. Uh, when you're talking about going from uPortal 4 to uPortal 5, that's when it gets a little more, um, you know, you have to have more expertise in the system to see, you know, have you made any customizations in uPortal Core or those portlets, um, and then, uh, you know, possibly exporting your data before you do the upgrade and then importing your data back into um, your, you know, your current version of uPortal, uh, now running with uPortal Start. So it's doable. Um, the, the, that migration to get you up to uPortal 5 can be, you know, some heavy lifting, um, but then the uPortal 5 upgrades are, are pretty slick now. I think we are, our half, um, our half an hour is up, Kathy. Uh, is there any final questions? All right, well, I appreciate your folks' attendance and the discussion. Thanks so much, Chris, for your presentation. Thanks for everybody for your participation as well. Um,